For this video lecture, we're going to be talking about these 10 terms. Now, some of these you know already, and some of them we're going to be talking about today, and some of them we're going to be talking about more in the future. So don't feel like you have to get it all perfect right now, but we're going to get it started and start identifying these things. Now, knowing the right terms when it comes to programming is really important because in the textbook, if they're going to use these words, in questions, they're going to use these words. So knowing the particular vocabulary when it comes to functions is a really important thing. And it's just straight memorization, being able to identify. So something that you certainly should be able to do and you'd be able to work on. So void function and return function. Let's start with those. A void function is what we've been doing all along. So it's a function that just chunks everything and it does and it does a task, but it doesn't return a value. So most of the functions you've been using since the first week of school, they've been void functions. But just recently we started using return functions. And you know a return function because at the end it's going to have the word return. And it will return some kind of a value. Usually it's a number, but it could also be a string. So let's just take a look at this example right now. This right here. This first function has a return in it. So I would label this one as a return function. Let's take a look at this one. It does something, it computes and it prints, but it doesn't have the return statement in it. So this is going to be my void function. Now a void function does actually return something. It returns the value none with a capital N. And we're going to talk more about that later, but just kind of make a note of that in your notes. A void function does return the value none, but it's something you can work with. And a return function will return an actual value that you're going to use somewhere in your code. So we can identify void functions and return functions. Now, every function has these three things, a name, a header, and a body. It should be fairly straightforward. The name of this one is cap text. Here's the name. The name of this one is main. And the header is the entire line. The header always has the colons at the ends that indicates any kind of a header, any kind of statement header. And then the body is the part that's always indented for spaces. So we've got our function header and our function body. Function header, function body, and we know what the names are. Okay, now we, let's talk about the calls. A void function call stands by itself. So you see main right here. And those are the most of the kinds of function calls we've been doing because most of our functions have been void functions. But a particular thing you need to know about a return function call, since it's returning a value, it has to be part of a statement. So here's an example right here. Total equals cost plus cap tax. Cap tax is my function. And this is how I call it. So it has to be part of this something. It's not going to stand alone. So that's kind of how I look at it. A void function call stands alone. A return function call has to be part of something. So it could be part of a print statement. It could be part of an assignment statement. But it has to be part of an, a statement. Can't stand alone. Now these three we're going to talk more about, but let's just kind of take a look at them, see if we can identify them. So when we talk about them in more detail, you're already familiar with where to find them. A local variable is going to be a variable that's used only inside a function. So I take a look right here. Tax is only used right here in this function. It's a local variable. If I look a look right here, take a look at this function, cost and total are local to this function only. So both cost and total are going to be local variables. Okay. So it's a variable that's used only inside a function. We're going to talk more about scope later in this chapter, but just kind of realize local variables, they're right there. Now, a parameter is something that the function needs in order to do its task. So in order to calculate the, the tax, I already have tax rate. Notice that's an all cap letter, so that's a constant. But I need the cost in order to calculate the tax. The cost is down here, but variable functions don't really share. So the only way that they can share is through parameters and arguments. So in order for cap tax to calculate the tax, it needs the cost. This is going to be my parameter. Parameters are always, always in function headers. Okay? So parameters go with function headers. Now the argument is what happens in the function call. So a function call is going to have an argument. And the argument is going to get passed into the parameter. Now oftentimes the name is the same. They don't have to be. So I could have called this anything, or up here I could have called it anything. It just kind of makes sense to use the same name, but realize that they're not really the same thing. What's going to happen is it's going to take the value of cost 
and pass it into this, it becomes a local variable here, and they're going to use it. So these are two separate things, but they share a value. This is my parameter, this is my argument. Now we're going to go through the task of actually labeling this like on the assignment that you're going to be getting. So let's just start with the things that we know. This one right here has a return statement, so this is going to be my return function. We're going to have a lot of labeling to do, so give yourself plenty of room. This one right here has no return. This is my void function. Now for each one I should be able to identify the name. Okay the header, and the body, function body. I'm just going to put F for function. Okay, so we labeled all of those parts. Now let's take a look at the calls. So right here I have my void function call. And right here, I have my return function call. You're going to have to look for it because remember, it's part of a statement. Now, the last three things to look for are our local variables and our parameters and our arguments. So my tax is my local variable. And over here, I've got cost and total local variables. And then my cost is going to be my parameter and my cost here is my argument. Okay, now we're gonna go through one more example and I've left the name just kind of ambiguous for a reason because you can't always depend on what the name is. You have to really just look for the clues. So let's kind of go through this process again. This one right here has a return. This will be a return function. This one doesn't have a return. It will be a void function. Okay, we've got our name, we've got the header, and we've got the function body. Now I've got right here, I know that this, it stands alone, this is my void function call and this one right here mystery is my function it's right here this is my return function call it's part of a print statement this time as long as it's part of something it's going to be a valid call so return function call so look for it as part of a statement now here I've got Z as my local variable and I've got X and Y as my local variables here. If I look in, next to the header, I've got the X and Y here are my parameters. And in my function call, these X and Ys are my arguments. Now I know sometimes this can be a little bit hard to see in the video, so I'm going to take a snapshot of this and put it on the website. So as you're doing your actual assignment, uh, the pictures can help you know exactly what to label. I expect for you to write it all out and not just draw lines or color code.